Well, we were on a, a long-awaited episode. Yes. They're actually angry with all three of you. Why? The Why? audience. Because Why are they you, angry? You gave them just the tip a month and a half ago that, well, hey, we went on it the other day. Hunt. Right. Oh, but so, we're not going to talk about it. But, but it's going to make it, dude. Doing shows in the flesh is yeah. so much. I agree. Fucking better. I agree. Like, so much. BTC's better. fine and all, but it's just not. the same. I take no side here. I'm just letting you know that they've been complaining. So if you have a message for them, this is the time to address. Hey, it. Hey, a little anticipation on things. Never hurt anybody. Yeah. 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 And oh, then why don't you just tell the audience that they're all dumb for for wanting this? You're putting words. I love in the mouth. audience. I don't <laughs> like know what you're New talking about, Jared. We <laughs> do not <laughs> exist without them. Yeah. We... <laughs> Well, I think it's important to build um, anticipation and then, you know, execute like in a timely manner. So it actually helps for like the full experience, yeah. you know, uh, now we you got to build to it and now you have a prop. So that was, this is the thing, like we kicked it around. We're like, well, let's do it in Salt Lake. Uh, let's do it here. We missed a couple in-person times because we've been fucking busy. And then... Cole called me and said, hey, we're close to getting this thing done. So he sent it down. It's like, we're- I mean, we're, and it's got a smell to it, but that it's, adds- it's it's not, No, it's not that bad. Historic animal. It's, it's not that bad. Uh, yeah. it's, but it's skin. not that good. <laughs> it's an animal skin. Well, I think, I think we should start it. I think you should kick it off in the, in, in the planning piece of this because this was your, this was your baby. Yeah. You've, you've been kicking it around for over two years and then you finally executed and it's not- just a, oh, hey, let's all pop up here and go on a hunt. This is very, very planning intensive and and logistically intensive. Yeah, because when you have a dream, you know, you 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 got to, what is it? Like, believe, dream, and achieve. Uh, Conceive, believe, achieve. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's the self-help no. that doesn't self-help anybody. Yeah, it doesn't self, like, you know, the self-help, I can, I can give everybody on this, and there's, like, no self-help, which is the company's been doing great, greatly because of uh, all the customer support and everything that, that, I mean, everything that we do as far as the media, the products, uh, we've been, we've been really blessed uh, with all the success of the company. And, you know, we're, we actually like working with each other as part, uh, well, we like working with each other most of the time. <laughs> as part of uh, and I, I originally was like, I want to do this right after we met Cole uh, bear guide bear guide yeah but it just seemed like bridge too far just like no way am I going to be able to take that much time off it's too expensive like there's just no way so Cole came back and we had talked about it a few times came back was like listen I'll cut you guys a deal um do you want to go it's like well okay yeah I want to go for sure because you never know how much fucking life you got in this world to be fair like you never know and well you know, my kids brown, brown bear hunt is like the the precipice it's like the 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 once in a lifetime hunt that most people never had the opportunity i mean i've watched you know plenty of shows about it and but it's just something you never would believe that you could actually go do because it's a pretty arduous process to get out there yeah. to discuss but then the planning phase is the time off work you know two weeks away without essentially cell service for us is Pretty and that, that's the thing, that's the thing to touch on to you for people out there that aren't really hunters or haven't experienced hunting. This is not a, Hey, we're going to pull off the side of the road on some state land and start hiking. This is a, this is a fucking saga just to yeah. get in the area. And then you guys needed what, two to three weeks allotted for, for you guys to actually hunt. Yeah. We, I mean, it's, it's well, high mountain adventure at its finest. I think we had to do five flights in total just to wow so the transportation process you have to go through just to begin the process overall right. well, beginning we'll this hunt is, now where do, where you guys both started in san antonio you yeah, were, yeah. you were in salt lake where did you go um, we, all, we all linked up in anchorage yeah so to rewind go for it to, so to rewind from the the beginning of the logistics and the effort which was okay let's do it uh then originally it was me then i called matt you know, let's do this. And, and this is Matt two years like, ago. For two context. years ago. This yeah, is, this, this is, is before pre COVID. COVID. Uh, you know, if we meet these goals, we should celebrate by doing this. And uh, we met and exceeded our, our, our goals. And I added Logan last minute uh, because I, I felt it would be important to surprise our 
our Logan, you know? Uh, so I, Matt and I kept on talking about how like, we're going on this bear hunt. It's going to be so epic. Like, <laughs> Oh my God, it's going to be so Talk fucking cool. You office, know, by the way, like, oh my God, Logan, check this out. Matt and I are going to be like in the middle of the Alaskan and tundra. Like, it's going to be so too. fucking cool. And just one us. up the lead. Yeah. I'll be like, Logan, check it out. Me and Matt are having a barbecue yeah, this weekend. Yeah, just yeah. me and him. Yeah, look, yeah, yeah, look at yeah, these yeah, sweet yeah, yeah. moose steaks yeah, that we yeah. got. Uh, it's just him and I. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Matt and I, are, uh, you're just sending him photos of yeah. us eating like giant crab check legs. Check out this new together. Hey, we we jointly owned F1. We had a crawfish boil and I was peeling Evan's crawfish for him. <laughs> it, was, it was such good teamwork. Logan, we set up a third plate so we could share off of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two pieces. Uh, Notice how I wasn't even considered for this. No, because this isn't your thing. Oh, you would I hate this. I don't, you would absolutely you would hate, hate it. You would hate it. I, 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 like we absolutely talked about agree it. You would have been I, I understand. Yeah. I don't want to mm -hmm. hike. I know. That's why I don't hunt. Mm -hmm. well, it wasn't too hiking intensive, but... No, you called me because this was great. Like coming out of twenty, like the hunting in Alaska pretty much got shut down. Shut down, yeah, yeah. Like it was off the table, and then you called, like, "Hey, come on, the spare hunt." It's like, oh, it's it's a dream, man. Yeah, it's like a dream. The, there's so few people who get an opportunity to experience something like this in general. Mm -hmm. And then, and then we can't forget about a week before the trip. You can already see get him, his face. Get him, get, that, get, get, him, get him fucking get rolling in. <laughs> get him hot right now. He just had two cups of coffee. So we, there were some things that we needed to, to, to get done, right? And so uh, I think it's just fun to talk about it because um, it's about the bear trip, but I think it's also about kind of like when you just business and partners and stuff, you know, we were like, we're, we might not go on this trip actually because, you know, we, we feel that there's some more important things that we have to do. Which was, it, it was just, it's, it's a, it's a perspective. It's not, not necessarily the right thing. And so we, we, we toughened that one out and it wasn't bad. It was just like, you know, Hey, let's do this. And I think we, the cool thing about that, I think it built around the context of like in seven years of business, we've never kind of just got away from it all for a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And then I think once I like noted that in my brain is like, okay, like it's okay to take a couple of days off like once every seven years. But you're also going to be with the two key players of planning anyway. This is very right, effective. Right, yeah. right, and we're going to be stuck in a tent without cell service and we're going to like connect on a friendship level yeah. like and, and discuss business. When do I get to connect on a friendship level? Like problems, so. And then we said, let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. And uh, we, we made it happen. I mean, at the end of the day, we made it happen. And, you know, the flights going up there. So going up into your conversation, which was, we'd take multiple flights in there. We shifted around. So you guys flew into Salt Lake and we flew from Salt Lake to Anchorage direct. And then from Anchorage, we flew down the peninsula into, you know, undisclosed location. Um, and then we flew from there to another location into bear camp. So like multiple flights. Yeah. Uh, I, I was actually surprised at the, at how fast we could get so remote. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I actually was like blown away at, dude, we were less than 24 hours. We, we literally went to one of the most remote places in Alaska in less than 24 hours from yeah. like major urban areas. And, and, you, and you got to picture it like, you know, there's charter flights and some of them are like King Airs when you're flying from Anchorage into like a very remote location. And you're flying through and there's like the planes icing up, you know, yeah. you're flying real close to like active volcanoes that are still smoking and have uh, vent holes and stuff. So you're like, it, it's an experience in itself, just the travel, at least for me, because yeah. Evan, um, funny story, he got so hot because the vent was dumping heat and all of us were like, why are you been such a wuss? And then I put my hand back there and it was like a hundred degrees. So <laughs> I look back and Evan's got his t-shirt off just sitting in the back. He's like, oh, I gotta piss. And he just starts pissing in his little coffee mug or think you did. I had a, no, I he peed in, in a plastic bag. I, like, oh, no, plastic I, bag. Yeah, I, no, I pissed bag. in everything. I pissed in my coffee mug and then I pissed in two <laughs> plastic bags. Because I don't know if you guys know this, but I drink a lot of fucking coffee in the morning. Like, I, I mean, it, I think most people like, it, it takes a lot to get this fucking diesel engine moving. You know what I mean? Like, I, I got to really, oh, yeah. I got to really prime plugs. Yeah, I got I to really prime this motherfucker to get well, it. Well, you were literally on the phone, like right up into the last moment that we had yeah. service. Correct. And I was like, hey, we got to start loading up because like, you know, you got to weigh everything that you're taking on these smaller flights. And you originally said you had to go take a pee. And I was like, you probably. 
I did not take a pee. I was, I was uh, discussing, you know, the future of uh, operations in the company with somebody. And, um, you know, I was pacing as I like to do, as I like to like get highly caffeinated, pace around and have fun. So we got on the plane and you're right. I was fucking cooking and we're watching the ice build up on the wings. And I'm thinking about, okay, because he, he keeps hitting the de-icer and then, like the ice isn't coming off, no. right? He's like hitting the Definitely de-icer point, yeah. and we're looking around and it's a little, it's a, like the plane's old as fuck. Yeah, old as fuck. Yeah, like, there's no other way to put it. It's old as fuck. Which, We're hissing in bags. Yeah. Solid. Solid. Matt's, Matt's pretending like he's not seeing the ice. I'm pretending like I'm not seeing the ice. <laughs> I'm pretending like he's not seeing the ice. And then we all talk later and we're like, did you guys see all that ice? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, did you see like that ice build up and the guy kept hitting it and I saw him dodge a couple of ice. I was like, you saw that too? I was like, okay, I was just acting tough because I'm yeah. all looking at the ocean. Like, yeah, I got about like 10 minutes in that cold water before I go yeah. hypothermic. And I'm like, hmm. Because you're just like running that through yeah. your head. Because it's like, it, I think you're so far removed because for me, when we're flying over there, you expect to see like oil rigs and ships and boats. Sure. Nothing. nothing. And there's just nothing. Zero. Nothing. And so it's like you in the wilderness. It's straight up like, pla- and, and, and it's not unlikely for a plane to crash. You're watching the most, the most likely thing that crashes those planes up there happen right to yeah. you. They ice yeah. down and they go, wee. Yeah. Wee. Wings fail. Yeah. yeah. They stall. Yeah. But, I, and I'm not saying it was like terrifying, but it's definitely a consideration, yeah. I think, for guys like us that are prepping. You're like, okay, if we go down, and I lived through this and I was like, okay, I got my rifle and some sick of cold weather gear. I can, I can probably fend for myself. It's my ego talking, but I, I felt that way. Well, well, Matt, the funny thing about humble Matt is, <laughs> oh, um, oh, we've already jumped there. We, <laughs> we, <laughs> nickname <laughs> we, we, he later, this is a fast forward, but we, we go back to it. But later he's like, no, nah, I can land this thing. I've, I've been watching this pilot for like five minutes. I got it. Don't worry about it. I'm like, I did. I know. I watched him take off and land. I was like, I, I, I'll, it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be we'll pretty, live. but we're going to live. Especially like if Trevor and you were there, we can work through that panel. I've flown a freaking plane multiple times. So I, I can I can get it on approach and I just, you know, figure You're out where driving. the thingies are. It's just driving. Yeah, but He's what would driving. happen when something pauses us and Evan's bag of piss comes up and hits you in the back of the head? Are you ready for contingent things to happen such yeah. as that? I was just hoping it's gonna be a bag of poop, and then I just would have put like little <laughs> eyeliners under, <laughs> and I'd be like, like, "It's game mode, mode, motherfuckers." Really, <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, I probably would have crashed the plane, but uh, yeah, but yeah, it's super. Know, I mean, it is fun because everybody, all of us, were thinking about this. We're like, "Oh, I can <laughs> land this fucking plane." Like, we're just egomaniacs. I could land this fucking plane. <laughs> That's not a problem. I can land this plane in the middle of the Alaskan tundra. Pfft, whatever. Yeah. I saw Cash do it in the little plane in the, you know, whatever. Yeah. And you're like, okay. So we get to this fishing village after, you know, flying over the ocean. I, it, it was super fun. Like, it, it was awesome. a really, really fun. Like, we, we land in the middle of nowhere. Dirt airstrip. And, uh... Like there's the the guy that is the native, and he's like the the police officer, the firefighter, the <laughs> town the town mayor. Like he, did he interview the plumber? Like, is that? Hi. But we, I, I was thinking like, man, this is like because they were talking about like all these COVID tests and things you're gonna have to do, and like you know, I was like, whoa, man, like this is gonna be legit. He just like comes up, hey guys, <laughs> hi. That was about. That was about it. Do you guys have COVID? Nope, sure don't. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Yeah, let's I'll do this. See you later. See you later. Uh, but it was like first impressions when we landed. I was, I was like, man, this place is incredible. The snow around the mountains, the like, just the smell of the ocean and, and natural waterfalls coming off oh, the rock faces. Man, like, oh, it's man just, this it's, is making me hungry for salmon. Well, yeah. didn't it? Like, there's only what twelve people that occupy this place. Yeah. In the winter, so like it's it's so desolate, it's so remote that there's just no there's nobody out there, dude. There's no people. Like in fishing no. season, it picks up a little, but there's twelve people. Like, can uh, you imagine uh, yeah. living an Alaskan winter in a small community with twelve people? Hi, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like what? Like there's not a lot of opportunity. You talk about like deployment standards. Like yeah. you better shack up with a good that's, situation, or you're gonna go crazy. That's yeah. not. That's not. That's not even deployment standards. That's just like. That's 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 it's a whole other situation. situation. That's less than a platoon standard yeah. in a high society. That's a squad. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's a squad. <laughs> yeah, twelve. That's yeah. half a platoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's. I, I think the funnest part for me started when you know we like to Evan's point. We land in this like little fishing village. There's really no one there, 
And that's time where, you know, you're making sure all you have your hunting license, the proper tags, you know, everything's good with the state, the outfitter. And it's a very um, like paperwork intensive thing because yeah. you have to like check all the boxes and there's a lot of them, obviously, because it's a highly regulated thing. But once we got on the Pipers, which are the little essentially bush planes that take you into the wilderness, it's the pilot and then you in the back and you're just like cramped. And it's literally like a, a dune buggy with wings, I yeah. believe. Um, yeah, it's like Ash a dune buggy. Describe it to yeah. us. And it had the big like tundra Alaskan wheels that I didn't realize they could land pretty much everywhere with those everywhere. fucking things. Which I think insane. a dune buggy is like over, uh, okay, giving a, 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 lawnmower a lawnmower with wings, with wings yeah. would be a better. Oh, dude, better but then you're, you fly another, you know, 30 minutes into this like really, really remote location. And that so was you the leave fun part. the 12 people one. Yep. yep. And then you go into the no people one. No yeah. people. Yeah. No people. Now you're a distance mile. from the 12 people. Yep. Uh, quite, a, quite a quite a quite a good day. and that flight, and they have no well, resources there within reason like anything they well, need has to plus get miles charged. if you're in a plane that's going about 100 120 knots mm -hmm. and yeah. you flew for 30 minutes you're 60 miles from the 12 for sure yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. then two and a half hours from any sense of civilization yeah like anchorage oh, dear. yeah yeah oh dear but See, that's really cool because you're kind of like flying in between these you know the the valleys in between these big mountains and you're just like trekking back to get into our essentially our camp. And then, you know, I, I didn't really know what to expect when we were coming on camp. I'm not sure how you guys feel. I'd be curious, but you come in, they're like, yeah, camp set up. It's awesome. You just see two little tents and it's on a dry lake, lake bed. That's it. You're just like, Dude. oh, and just plop right down on the lake bed. You I, just get out, throw your gear out, plane takes off and heads back. to. Bed. I had an yeah, app nice. for the thermostat for a hotel in Nashville while you guys were. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, honestly, though, is so much nicer than what I expected. Agreed. I thought we were going to be in like, one man tents and like every night would be like a you know freeze dried meal by yourself. But like we had a big like kind yeah. of wall tent and there was a little community area. Yeah. Like Cole had a bunch of stoves in the middle. Like it was a much higher standard than I was expecting. Yeah, I think my impression of it, you know, coming into the lake bed, it was uh, it was really interesting because I couldn't tell that it was a lake bed. It just looked like a big gravel bar for some reason. Yeah, and then landing getting out you're like okay that this is this is this is pretty interesting and it's really cool and then the tents were kind of tucked back the tents looked really small flying in there yeah obviously things get bigger as you get closer i don't know if you guys know how that works hmm. perspective um, i think yeah it's yeah, called yeah. perspective yeah. uh but i was i was pleasantly surprised the way that the whole thing was was put together those arctic oven tents the the stone yeah. glacier tent the arctic oven tent like those were those were legit. Like that Arctic oven tent really, really impressed me. And that's not a ad. It's just, it really fucking impressed me because that thing held the heat. It was, uh, it was, I would, I would imagine pretty thick like that. The, yeah. Yeah. It was almost texture. like this Cortex canvas. Yeah. I'm not sure that it's some synthetic material, yeah, but like it, was, it blocked wind really good and kind of insulated. So when you had like five guys in there, it actually like, warmed itself just based off the body. So did you guys pack in all your food or did you have to fish and things like that to eat? Did you do any fishing? Packed everything. No, because the, the, at the time, salmon, they, they usually yeah. start popping off in the fall. Oh, yeah. And I, I don't know the legality of that. So yeah, everything was dry <laughs> meals and literally trail mix. That's oh, all wow. we're eating. Okay. Yeah, and you don't want to make, like, to Cole's point, like you don't want to make this huge sound and smell signature. Oh, so... Okay. Like there's no fires no, allowed. There's no fires. Oh God. Yeah, smoke, there's smoke and bears don't get along because their yeah. noses are so good. Like yeah. you'll burn the area, not like from yeah. fire, but yeah. as far as a, yeah. a scent trail. Bears will leave. Yeah. Yeah. They will. Unappreciative bears. Unappreciative, Unappreciative bears. bears for smoke. <laughs> yeah. So you don't even get a fire. How, what was the temperature when you guys landed? It like, what are we looking at here? Is there snow on the ground or is it yeah. just in the yeah. it, Up in the mountains, okay. there's, it's not on where we yeah. ended up landing, but you, we kind of ran through three different types of weather. One was like, you know, just kind of, kind of cold, but manageable. And then like crazy high winds, sideways rain, mm. freezing cold temps. And then it would like warm up and get into the sixties some oh. days. Did so you bring it was like, a camera? Oh, you yeah. point and shoot? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. We all brought... We all brought our cameras. We took a ton of photos. Well, we can embed a bunch of those photos yeah. into this. I think that'd be great. Um, but for me, to, to, before we get too far into the actual act of the hunting, what, what kind of really, there were so many parallels to kind of the preparatory work that goes into getting 
Yeah. And yeah. like, so for me and like what I want to provide from a perspective of value with this thing is like, I think dudes like us, groups of friends and individuals, like it hits all the wickets for so many different things in life that like doing this with your friends is so rewarding to like, especially for veterans to like go through like all the pro like it activates all the old stuff. You like remember how fucking awesome life is. There's so many parallels, I think. For well, me think, specifically yeah. to like that trip I went down and did in Peru, like it kind of had this like centric, like focusing grounding effect, mm. similar to what it was like to go down there. And there was no psychedelics consumed on this trip. Uh, I, I think there, <laughs> I think for me too, there's like, there's always a high reliance in like um, society. And then when you're like prepping for, and I thought it was going to be, you know, I wasn't sure like how much we were going to be sucking. how much we were going to be in the sock. Yeah. So I was like, not sure if I'm going to be like on the ground with a sleeping bag with no tent or like mm. I have a tent. So like when I was prepping the same thing, like gear, I'm like, okay, I'm like quick draw on my freaking rifle out of my backpack. Oh yeah. Sitting there. And you know, I had a really fun time with my dad the day before we left. I was just like packing up all my gear and just making sure I have everything and running through it and like sharing a whiskey with my dad. And it was just a cool experience. Cause it was like, I felt like I was getting ready to go on a deployment almost. And I know it's not the same, but at least psychologically for me, it was a kind of mm. fun moment because it's like, oh, I'm going like, it's just going to be me and like a team. And it was like a very refreshing feeling for me. I Let really me guess what that. Roger was saying to you. I just want to provide some Roger commentary. Please. Was he like, back in my day, we didn't have any of that newfangled equipment. We just shoot that thing with like a 30-30 lever action. Something like that. You know my dad far too well. <laughs> he's like, what is it, a carbon fiber bear? All I had was, we didn't have Gore-Tex back in my day. I hunted my bear, I hunted bit. my bear in Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> I had a Bowie knife and a fucking good I attitude, have to go son. to no goddamn Alaska. I had a yeah. Atlatl. Back so, in my day, we just what? had Oh, no, wait, Lattle. Jared, we got to tell you about this story. So there, there was this one magazine that Cole ended up putting in front of us. Specifically, but back before everything was highly regulated up in Alaska, this World War II vet attached M1 Garands yeah. to the wings of his plane, yeah. did a hasty zero, and he would fly around Alaska and shoot, the bear. and shoot bears from <laughs> his cockpit <laughs> with a string yeah. attached to his yeah. M1 on his wings. Yeah. Yeah. And this was like a huge, what magazine was that? It's like, it's on the cover of this old sportsman. outdoor yeah. sportsman's like, magazine from the 40s magazines. or 50s. Dude, just them. rough as fuck. That's so, the roast, rough as fuck. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're on the ground. We, 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 we've been on the ground, but we got to press pause on, we're right here at the lake bed before day one. Because we didn't tell anybody what we brought. And our prep actually, like, because you did a prep course before yep. you went. Matt had a special rifle. I had a rifle. Like everybody had rifles. So what did you bring? I brought a 375 Ruger Hawkeye. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, and so I went out to FTW Ranch, um, not too far from San Antonio, Texas here. And this was at the recommendation of Cole. I was like, I was originally, I was like, Cole, I want the unique Alaska experience. Yeah, yeah. Like I want to kind of know, I want to do this based off of like what you do and right. what you're taking into the bush. Like I want to kind of mimic what you're going through and like kind of get in your headspace real well. And he's like, well, you know, that's awesome. I think you're going to want your own rifle and like going through that process. I was like, yes, I love buying guns. Of course I want to do that. He's like, okay, hook up with these guys, go to FTW ranch, go through a short course. And I ended up showing there with all the Swarovski guys, right? which also proved to be awesome because I took a bunch of Swarovski glass and God, it's good. Like I'm a huge fan of that after going through this whole process. Mm -hmm. So I show up, no gun. Immediately the owner like kind of starts walking me through like, hey man, here's your options. Here's like some of the things. And this guy's got tons of experience in African hunting, pretty much all the big game that you can do. Knows like he's done. Hunt. Yeah. Dangerous game. So he kind of just started talking me through stuff. I <clears throat> I shot a little bit. I ended up going with the 375 Ruger. Um, and that was that was kind of Cole's initial recommendation. He was like, Man, you just can't go wrong with 375. That's what that's what I care. You got H and H, you got Ruger, you can choose from. Um, and so they had a ton of 375 options. It's a kick you in the ass caliber. Mm -hmm. And the Ruger is like with the, I got a Hill Country stock, which is a little bit heavier than like the normal. Carbon composite and like it was really nice. Like I could, I shot that thing out to 800 yards before we took off, and 
I felt like super ready to go. The glass I ended up taking, which and was here, this is another good thing. What what did you zero your rifle at? Because we all zeroed a rifle differently, at different yards. Yeah. yeah. Another thing that they recommended out at FTW, because um, we were doing a bunch. Part of the training out there is like we got to shoot a bunch of moving targets, which ended up proving worthwhile mm -hmm. a little bit later down the line. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> ended up zeroing at fifty. I didn't um, need a practice. I'm, I'm yeah. super humble. <laughs> humble man. I'm super humble. Um, <laughs> but I ended up going with a Swarovski 3x16 um, that had an illuminated reticle that I absolutely right. loved. Like having that like quick recognition. It's like if this thing's coming out of the bush at like 30 yards, just having that illuminated reticle. Like right. I, I just go back and forth between non-illuminated and illuminated. Yeah. Your eye just picks it up so much easier. So I went with that and um, came out of it pretty good to go. And then... 33 Nosler? Yeah, yeah. I had actually built a uh, integrally suppressed 375 about a year and a half before, specifically for the bear hunt. Yeah. H&H, &H, right? H&H, uh, &H, yeah. And then COVID happened, um, kind of postponed it. And then I, I actually got COVID on a hunt, a whitetail hunt, but I shot my whitetail, um, I think it was about, what, seven months before the bear hunt um, with a Nosler a 28 nozzler, I believe it was. And the way that action worked and it shot, I was like, this is awesome. I love this gun. And I didn't know at the time when the guys was just hanging out, I was like, I'm actually like the head marketing guy for nozzler. Do you want one for your bear hunt? I was like, yes, please. So he right. built me a custom 33 nozzler. And, uh, you know, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I, I love that gun. It's so lightweight. You guys felt it. It's just, and it's a tack driver. You know, I went yeah. out to the range and I was just like key hole in this thing. So I was like, all right. Um, and then for me, I went out there and I was thinking about like a hundred yard zero, but I'd heard some of the guides mention that a lot of shots, just the way things work out were at 80 yards. Yeah. And so I actually zeroed mine at 80 yards, which was a little different because that's kind of when we we're sitting there on some potential shots, you're kind of working through, you know, your, your windage and elevation and you're like trying to figure out what your bullet drop's going to be which was a little different because it's obviously 100, 2, 3, 4, and you're kind of having to do a little Kentucky windage. But I'm like, right. if I'm an inch, inch and a half off, I'll, I'll be fine, you know, because the animal's so big. But that's what I took. Um, loved it. Performed great. What did you take? What glass? Um, Leupold, of course. Yeah. Um, did I you have Mark V? What was on there? Yeah. I, what's on there? It's, it's like a Mark V or a Mark VI or something, but it was, it's a, it was a 1 to... 24 or something. I had to look, but yeah it, yeah, it was great. Cause the thing that I was wanting to do too, is I wanted to have it all the way back down to one or three mm -hmm. as the low setting, because when you're working through that elder brush and a lot of the stuff, like you might have to take a shot at 15 yards if you spook a bear and it's right. between you and death. And the last thing you want is to have like your lowest zoom point at like 12. Yeah. That would you're, you're like, good. where the fuck is this thing? You, mm -hmm. you kind of want that be yeah. like, quick reaction to be able to shoot. I think all of us were kind of putting that in our head um, separately. Yeah, the yeah. thing Cole was, he's like, you know, you can go one to 16. That's kind of what I recommend. Um, but I, I don't, I rolled on three power most of the whole entire time. Yeah. You know, I listened to Cole buy it a 338 Lapua mag. Uh, but I was running heavy loads with it. So. And how long is your barrel on that? Because 20 feet. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this 20 thing feet. was a cannon. Yeah. Like when it was Evan was, heavy, was, it was, it was 19, 19, it was a 19.8 nice inches well, feet. <laughs> I, I built that gun a few years ago. Um, you know, uh, McMillan stock, proof barrel, defiance action. Um, it has less than a one pound trigger pull. Like it's, 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 you sneeze it's, on that yeah, thing and it goes off. It's it's spicy. It's, yeah, it's 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 like it's unique. Spicy. It's <laughs> unique. It has like a, a you know an, a howitzer muzzle brake on it. Um, and honestly, I was like, man, I, I think I can get it done with this. And I built this rifle specifically two years ago for this occasion because um, I was on the I was on a podcast I think with the with the McMillan guys, and they're like, hey, we'll send you stock. What do you want it for? You know. So and then I called. Proof and they're like, sure, we'll send you a barrel. So all this shit was basically donated. Yeah. And uh and I'm like, this is awesome. Every person on the planet that hunts jealous, right? Yeah. Now. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I can I, 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 be nice. Proof barrel too. Nozzle used yeah. those and Nozzle built it for me. So shout out to Bro. them. I mean, I they they comped me that gun and I was like, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's I mean, a lot of these companies we built great relationships over the years, and you know, we've we've given them a lot of coffee for offices and we do a lot of things for other companies that we, we truly love. 
And so it's not like, oh, well, we're just going to send you guys stuff because you're cool. It's like, no, man, we're sending like their, their offices, their buildings, their owners, their CEOs, like we're, we're sending them coffee for them to drink. Like we do it for Leupold all the time. I'm like, box up a, a skid and send it out there because they're employing, you know, a hundred plus you Americans working yeah, in a factory yeah, yeah. in Oregon. Like, yeah. like we got, we got to fucking shoulder to shoulder, yeah, shoulder yeah, motherfuckers. Like yeah. we're, we're, we're in this whole thing together, you know? Yeah, yeah, and for sure. so it, it's such a cool community. And I, I mean, I went down a rabbit hole there, but well, yeah. two, three, Lapua mag, um, was your I class? zeroed, uh, Mark five. So okay, Leopold. Leopold Mark five, um, you know, Leupold's been so cool. So yeah, like I those guys are Mark five on my M14. I love dude. that thing. That I think is yeah, I good, heard it's a collector's item now. Such a good optic. Yeah, you can't. You can't get a Mark V. Such a good optic. You, you you because they're so back ordered on those. They're like they're using them on PRS. Like all the long range shooting guys are yeah. using them. They're 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 all over. I I do love the gun. I do love the rifle. I think it's a fucking really cool rifle. Like I still I. I put it in my office now. So it's like sitting there in the office. And every time I see it, I'm like, well, man, it just makes me warm and cozy. Yeah, it's like, uh, I zeroed happy. a 200. Um, and the reason I did that was like, I end up taking like long shots for some reason, right? Like I, I, and my elk was the exception to that rifle last year because I was at 97, but it was like a 94 yard archery shot. And I, I just, I'm always thinking about like, fuck man, like I want to be on inside 400. I don't want to be thinking a lot about dope. I want to be like really yeah. tied at 400. And the way I looked at it, I think I had uh, on that bullet, I think I had about uh, 12 inches of drop at 400 based on a 200 yard trip, zero, something like that. Like we'll just call it close enough, right? I can't remember my exactly, uh, I'd, I'd have to pull up my phone. But the way I looked at it, I was like, well, how big is it? How big is a heart on a bear, right? And if I'm holding top of the heart at 400, I, it, I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to like punch it in, right? It's it's big, like it's it's a it's a relatively big target and double lung, you know, like it's it's big. So that was my and we really didn't we knew we weren't gonna really push out past no nah. four five like <clears throat> from there they're just such big animals and you know it, like it's 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 ethic. It's pretty much non-ethical to be shooting that far. I think yeah. for a lot of us, and it's like, and you'd rather work in on them. So yeah, and we yeah. we asked. I was like, Cole, like, say five fifty comes up. He's like, no, no, don't really no. want to do that. But don't, don't bears pack in like groups of nine? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's me, and that's why you don't take a long shot because you have risk too much going right. Right. Yeah, the body yeah. because right. the pack will come and it's get a you. Cubby yeah. of the it's, bears. Mm -hmm. oh, it's yeah. a cubby. You, you flush them out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in the lake bed, when you guys get there. How does this set up? Like, are you guys quadranting? Like, because is it is it like a day out, a day in? Are you saying, okay, here's here's our area of hunt, mm -hmm. and now you're sectioning off the areas each day that you're going to conquer? Are you splitting up? Are you all together? How does this work in the planning phase of you guys sitting in the lake bed? Like, like, is it two days? Like, are you going out and staying the night out mm -hmm. in the hide, or are you just out and in every day? And then you're yeah. you're yeah. you're kind of good almost question. like pinwheeling mm -hmm. it. So in, the, the interesting thing part of uh, Alaska, which I'm sure a lot of people know, is what would you guys say about four hours of actual night? Three, three, four hours of actual yeah, darkness? Yeah, it's like, yeah, that's when, when we weird, left, like, it, it didn't get dark till 1230. Yeah, right. and then by 430, the light sun's coming yeah. back on. And so yeah. you're, you're out pretty much the whole entire time. And, you know, I think we obviously hadn't been out here before, but the guide, you know, it's like the first couple of days, it's really just AFAM, right? where the bears coming out of hibernation because they're coming down off the snow as it begins to melt up the the mountainside and you're, you're essentially just sitting there and glassing and going where are the bears moving are these a bear that we want to track but you have to be very careful about your central so you're actually kind of going to the same location nearly every day at first to kind of just figure out where the movement's at because if you start to move in other directions you're gonna I mean, bears will smell you for like two or three days after yeah the whole principle is just minimize your imprint yeah so like their sense of smell and i think i think it's 10x that of a dog so like they they get on a trail like and it happened with us to where bears yeah. would come through like two days later that right. are still on the same trail a bear that came through I mean, we had that one point a bear just come up and just Stand up, smell, and then they just go, nope. And you're, yeah. and they're like 800 yards from you. Yeah. Oh and they'll just God. catch a little gust of a wind that blows a little in the wrong direction. They'll smell you and they're like, I'm out, bye. And they're walking. So 
when they walk, when you're looking at them through glass, you're like, this thing ain't moving. No. But they're moving out. You got to think like these are huge animals with a really long um, arm span, leg span. And they've got four of them and they're moving across tundra, which varies like from, you know, in three feet uh, in height variation in, in tundra. And so their walk it, it's it's faster it's than a six human minute mile. Navigate fast. It's a six minute mile. They're they're running. Yeah. I mean, we would have to be running a six minute fucking mile to be keeping up with them. And they're just like course. walking. Yeah, right? with it's like normal lumber. They're gone. Yeah. Like so. One, I think on day one, uh, to to answer your question, we go out to Matt's point. We were minimizing well, our scent trail. So like, day, just for specification, day one we showed up. We just chilled in tents because you can't. You can't hunt one. Yeah, because the whole premise is you can't. Fly your ass into camp and be yeah, like, there's, oh, there's shit. A go. So it's actually, you can't do that. Yeah. It's, it's illegal. So we just chilled first day, but day one of the actual hunt. Yeah. Day one of the hunt. That's a good clarification because and we don't want anybody to, to like. So what good jokes came out that first day? Uh, I, you know, I think we were, I think we were pretty smoked from all the travel. Plus we, we got up, we got in late. We got up early. We, we went to bed. We got up and we were like, okay, let's pack up all our shit. And we didn't know how far we were going to go because Cole kept saying like, we're, we're just going to go right over here. Like he kept saying, we're just going to go right over here. Well, I've heard that story before from yeah. a lot of guys where they're like, <laughs> we're just going right over here. And you're like, okay, fuck off, dude. I'm packing for the day. Like, and I'm like, and I'm going to make sure that I got more than enough because we're just going right over here. It could be like 10 Ks for somebody. Like, so you don't know, like you're just prepping for big movement and yeah. going to sweat and are gonna get and not a lot of noise. You guys are very minimizing noise discipline too, right? We, I most mean, not, of the time, most of yeah. the time, like we're, we're a loud bunch. When there's not a lot of bear movement, we tend yeah. to get a little yeah. noisy. But definitely, when it's it's glass and time, you're, you're I mean, quiet. It's not like my kind of noisy. We're we're yelling and jumping and right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. when we get excited, about Cole would it. definitely have to tell us to keep it down. Yeah, yeah. He would. He, he yelled at me a lot guys. in a good way. It's yeah. Good. yeah. Hey, remember, you're on a hunt. I would. Well, no, not because I was. See, loud. this is another good thing why I wasn't there because I would be talking about mayonnaise commercials. And yeah, and we'd be excited, laughing. I get loud. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, I start yeah. making those squeaking noises. Yeah, those are at a different frequency that bears can hear. That's right a away. dolphin, <laughs> frequency, yeah. which means yeah. we could call in dolphins on a bear hunt, which would be completely. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it'd be so fun. Yeah. Not, not like a dolphin wearing a bear coat. That's that <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, I would so love be super to cool. fucking see that on a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fashionable dolphin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so like, so like day one of the hunt, you essentially move in. What do you guys say? Like in less than two miles to get where we're going. Yeah, I, I like think it was like less day. than a mile in that first, that first day. It, it was feels like because like you're like kind of, you're, you're traversing up. Yeah, you're going up. So it's about 2K, 2.5K. Yeah, and the, and the interesting part for me was that first day, I was like, well, okay, this is going to be a little mentally challenging because you're up there for, what, 15, 16 hours, and you're just sitting there with oh, binos. God. Just, this, yeah. just nice, glassing, man. and that's it. Yeah, it was such a throwback I to the old 40, days. 40 minutes. Yeah. Sitting in hide sites, man. He's a sniper, you know? Yeah. yeah. So he's like, like, he's like, oh, am I at work? Here. I'm like, this is like, what the hell? Interesting. Cool, cool. Good thing. Wow. We hey, that. We hey, scheduled hey, that. <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> I'll take care yeah. of it, Dave. <laughs> Keep telling your story. Well, yeah, let's just hold. I, I think it's, uh, that first day was like, it was super fun for me because yeah. being out in the, you know, the remote Alaskan tundra, I guess that's the correct terminology. If not, I don't care. Uh, whatever we want to call it. We're in remote Alaska. And, and um, yeah, and this is it, not like, hey, we know exactly the right terminology with everything. This is no, just essentially we, our experience of being guys that went out there. So. Yeah, I, there, there are pros that do this every day. We, we're probably going to use the inappropriate terminology for a lot of this shit. Who, who cares at the end of the day? Like it was so much fun. And like that first day we saw, I remember <laughs> it's was like, Bear, bear, bear. You know what it is? Oh, yeah. So, We're amped and, uh, up like, hey, bear, no, bear, 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 bear. That is a bear. bear. Oh, and then I was like, that's a fucking Shoot bear. So we could go home. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> like, Cole's like, shouldn't have brought him. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> uh, Willie was like, that's a moose. I was like, fuck off. This is, this no, is not right. a moose. That's it's a not bear. a moose. That's a bear. That is a bear. That is oh, definitely yeah, yeah. a right, I can only see the back. So I could only see the back of this thing out out in the on the um alders. And uh it it looks so much like a bear, like when you see the back when of a moose. You want it to be a bear. And 
But you, but you never looked at these things through glass. And like, I'll yeah. admit it, I was probably the slowest guy in glass for the first while. Cause like, it took me three days to realize just how far we were looking. Cause you think of a bear, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna see this big freaking animal. But like you're literally just looking for a speck of brown on the mountainside, miles and miles and clicks away. And that's essentially how you're getting their pattern of movement to know where they're at. So it took me at least three to four days to finally be like, that's what they look like through my binos. Got it. Cause they'd yeah. be like, bear, check out there. And I'm like looking, you know, like, I don't know, 800 yards away. They're like, no, no, two miles yeah. on the mountaintop. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? How? Yeah. How do you even know this? And to give you an idea of like kind of the terrain that we were in, like it's super harsh. Like it looks nice and forgiving, but once you get down into it, it's not at all. No, like you, you're, you're yeah. in this like, these grassy knolls. So like even walking on the flat stuff is difficult because there's just little mounds of like squishy permafrost that like mm. you, ha you can't tell if your foot is going to go in way down. down and you'd be up to your knee or if you're going to be on top of one of these yeah. things. So you kind of like have to do this weird, like bounding movement anytime you're on flat, flat ground. And then like, you really don't understand until you get I'm down into it. Breath just hearing the story. I know you are. You haven't exercised in that is five not years. True. I don't know. I, <laughs> and then you get like these huge like deep creek beds down yeah. through so like it's super easy like a a bear or moose could move in front of us like 500 yards away and we might not be able to see it because it's just moving it. down in the water and then it was huge mountain ranges yeah to where it would just be straight up in the distance oh dear yeah it was like living in a natural geographic like tv show i mean the beauty there is just like it reminded me when we first got out there, it, it, it started giving me this, this feeling because the, the terrain is unchanged and it's been basically the same for thousands of years. So I, I kept thinking about the, the indigenous um, people and how they came across from, you know, Russia, you know, Siberia the through, gap. yeah, like the Clovis, right? The, the Clovis tribe as they moved down from like, you know, the peninsula. Battling the short-faced bear that used to occupy that area. Bro, I, I could see it out there. I could like see, you know, tribes moving across that type of terrain. I could see them like setting up their camps and living out there. And um, that's one of the only places I've been where I could really see it. Like I could see the tribes living in those places because most of these areas that I'm hunting or have been in, for whatever reason, I it just didn't give me that feeling, but this is such a harsh terrain and it was so remote. I could finally like, wow, that's, that's, I'm looking at exactly well, what they were looking at. Untouched by humanity. Like yeah. most places it's been frequented in every hunting season, all that. Like there's not a lot of tags out there. Like it's relatively completely wild, untouched yeah. by humanity. And there's very few places I think that are that way. Mm -hmm. And that's because the climate is just fucking brutal up there. It's brutal. It's amazing. It's wet all day, every day. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's never not wet. And like, you can imagine being one of those early tribes trying to come through there. Like you would, you would have to carry spark like in, have, in, wow. in one of those little containers. Otherwise yeah. you're just, there's no possible way to generate fire. Cause no, always wet, always windy, always wet, always cold. Maybe like settle somewhere in like Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> like. I think they did. <laughs> I mean, that was the fun part. Sometimes like, we there. get like 40 mile an hour gusts of winds with like just sleet rain and it's just, it's just shooting you in the face. You're just kind of have your entire body covered in Gore-Tex with your little mouth hole and you're just sitting there like, oh, just another nine hours. <laughs> <laughs> just another, and we forgot some stuff. Well, Logan told us not to bring some like a stuff. jacket. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> that's not true. Yeah, there, yeah. there was a, there was a couple tertiary conversations that ended up happening and, thought Trevor kind of understood what I was. Uh, so we ended up not going with like the proper waiter boots yes. that we needed. So your feet were all wet. Which you take on fishing trips. Right. But we wore those every day. Like we, we had them brought in and we had waiters and waiter boots brought in and we ended up wearing them every day. And thank, thank, thank God, God we had yeah. them. Like, <laughs> thank God we had them because. It just kept the water out. Well, they're well, just, then you would have been. You're, you would have so, never been dry the whole yeah, time. You're yeah. there. I mean, it's just, it's too cold for shit to dry out. Like, and as soon as we did a, have no our fire. first creek or river crossing, you would have been wet for the rest of the time and your, you, your feet would have been like complete ice. 
the rest of the trip. Oh. Uh, so we had them because e- even though we had them after we did our first little river crossing, like we were like my feet and they, well, they were wet the entire one. time. It pays to be six too because I think it was like Cole and I were the only dudes because we had to do a river crossing and it was probably like fucking, I don't know, three and a half, four feet, whatever it is. But all the shorter guys got water in through their waders. Yeah. And so they're just dumping water out of their boots and stuff. And I'm sitting there dry as can be like, yeah, that pays to be a little taller. Yeah. yeah. And with all the snow melt that's happening, very, like we're in the middle of the melt. And so like every day the river would be right. two times as strong as oh it was the day God. before. It was, um, I, it was interesting, you know, like Will, myself and Trevor, we all got, cause we're all short. We all got, you know, water down our waders and, but the, the, the first bear that we really moved on. So we'd seen a few bears. So if kind of fast forward and like syncing up timelines, day one, we moved like two miles total, like out and back, super easy. We moved a little bit farther starting day two up on this hilltop to where we glassed like, like every day, all day long. We started seeing more bears. We started seeing a lot more bears. And then that, to Matt's point, we started understanding the size of the bear in the optic what do they actually look like? Because the other thing was, is like the color of the bear would vary. Right. Between, you know, was it a female? Was it a male? Uh, you know, had they just come out of hibernation? Like what did, what did their bodies look like after getting out of a hibernation? Well, that, like there's so really many different varying because things. Like being a guy that's hunted a lot in Texas, like you start to realize about how to like understand how old, like, uh, a whitetail is or right. an elk or a stag because they have like different coloration, obviously their horns. And then for the guides to kind of walk us through as far as like, you know, um, rub marks on their, on their coat. And that means that they've probably been out longer from hybrid and all of that stuff. And their, their head size reference to their, like, you know, their, their back size and their snout and all that. It was, it was cool to like, just get a fucking one oh one class on, how to like identify a bear. So, well, it, the ones I, I've only identified in my life are like just the thick gay dudes in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, they're, I, I hang out. They're yeah, they're forties. But, but yeah. you're getting really close to those guys too. Right, right. Yeah, I get you're getting right up there. You know, you God. cannot, you can't smell a certain way for them. It would right, right. Them and things like that. Yeah. But that first bear that we made a move on, all of us didn't know what a big bear looked like. So yeah, all okay. bears look big. We didn't know what a big bear looked like. So we made this move on this bear initially and like, let's go. Right. So we pack all our shit up, peel off the side of this mountain, get set up. And all of us are like, let's like, go time. Ramped up. Like, let's go. Let's, let's get it on. And you can have, they call backup shooters. So you have a primary shooter and then you can have somebody that's also backing you up. So all of us are like, from a safety perspective, from a safety perspective, it's like a bear. The and bear ethical because we all had tags. Yeah. We all had tags. Uh, we can have backup shooters and Cole can, and the guides can actually backup shoot too. So like you want to, you, you want the most ethical kill that you can. So that's one of the reasons why you want to make sure that these, these bears die a fast ethical death. Right. And then the other piece of that is why, like, why is it important to, you know, balance the bear population in these areas? I think it's important to talk about the conservation piece of this, Please. which because it's not these, for everybody. Like, these it's not are, for everybody. You're fucking majestic, majestic animals. Like, and that was one. Like, I don't know about you guys as far as expectations. Like, the first two days, like, I did not expect to see that many bears. There yeah, was saw, a ton of saw, bears. Like, what, like, I think eleven bears. Yeah, one of the first days. Yeah, and I think we I mean, aver- far away, like but. daily average was eight to twelve bears yeah. a day that we would see. Damn. Yeah, yeah. and he, he was saying like a lot of times they'll see for the entire trip mm-hmm. in, a, in, a, mm-hmm. in a two week period. Oh, because no one had been up there for over a year. So you guys are doubling back on. Yeah. Okay. For whatever reason. Yeah. yeah. Well, native Alaskans can still, like yeah. they, they can still hunt the, hunt the area, but no, no outside lower 48 yep. hunting, I believe. Um, and so the, the, the conservation and the balance of this is it's, it's, it is super important because the, the big males will eat the female bears. They'll eat smaller male bears. They'll eat bear cubs. They're, they, they'll eat moose, they'll, they'll eat anything, right? And it's like the three Fs, I think is what, what Cole boiled it down to. It's like fight, 
you know, flee or fuck, right? You're going to do three things. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, or fight, feed, or fuck. Like yep. three things. Like Pretty big much. nails. Big male, I've spent my whole life living that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like it, sometimes it's human. It's a big bear it's, mat. It's human. Um, <laughs> Boy or girl, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, doesn't matter. <laughs> and so a big male can really affect the entire bear population. It can, when it's, it, semi-territorial as far as what I know. Um, and so it is important to balance the actual number of bears. That's why, you know, the, the wildlife management in Alaska, it's why they issue the tags. It's not just to make money. It's to provide some balance to what's happening in these places between all the different species of animals. And provide money for conservation. And provide money for conservation. So I did, I, um, Brooke Little Bear sent me a book called A Shape in the Dark and kind of breaks down some of those numbers in its totality. Right. You got, um, and this was uh, as of 2018, we got about 30,000 to 40,000 brown bear in Alaska. And then in the Kodiak area, they take about on average 180 a year. Those 180 bears uh, generate about 5 million wow. in revenue. Wow. Did you know with Black Rifle Coffee's Coffee Club subscription, you can get fresh coffee shipped to you every month? What? You don't even have to go to the store. Whoa. You don't even have to leave your bed. What? Wow. How did you get in here? You might want to go ahead and join the Black Rifle Coffee Club subscription before one of these guys shows up at your place. That's crazy. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, well, I would imagine there's tertiary economies that are built from that too. I, I was talking to uh, uh, Johnny and JP Morris about this. Like, I've talked to them like three or four times about this and they, they talked about their bear hunting experiences and, you know, being in Kodiak. And we talked about like flying into Alaska and, you know, eating at the local diners and, you know, buying like coffee mugs from, you know, different coffee shops and the, the tertiary and supporting elements to the local economy. It means a lot to a lot of these people that have, uh, I would say limited means in order to make money based on their local economy. So if you have fishing and you have a few of these other, uh, I would say substantial assets that you can utilize to make money, you know, hunting is something that can really provide a, definitive boost to the economy and and it's also a necessity in the town, right you're just you're essentially just changing yeah. hands all yeah. the time uh, mm -hmm. oh, okay i'll take that i'll give it back to you <laughs> yeah and and the majority of conservation dollars i don't think people really understand that either which is the majority of conservation dollars come from hunting like come from hunting and fishing so people out there are like you know walking trails and taking photos of birds and doing all those great things out there the majority of those dollars to maintain your trails to you know, go out and maintain all the, the wildlife interests that are happening recreationally around the United States. Those are coming from fishing and hunting dollars. Right. Um, they're not coming from people like they're, you're, a lot of these people don't are, they're not paying trail fees. They're not like paying $5 to go walk on a trail. That's coming out of like hunting and fishing, our budgets. And I he, think- Pete is not paying for the trail. No, why? Well, I, I mean, who knows what the fuck people are paying for? I just know that like hunting is such a, valuable asset to the economy. I think that people have, have talked about it in some, some ways it can be villainized, right? We've, yeah. we've heard this, yeah, like there's course. some villainization where it's like, this is a beautiful animal. I'm the first person to tell you guys, like, this is such a beautiful animal that there is a, a conflict in some ways where you have to kind of look at it from a perspective of, conservation and ethics in a way that's like this animal is so beautiful and it's 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 truly prehistoric like it it looks like something that that shouldn't exist in the planet today and so there is a little bit of an internal debate where where you're like well such a beautiful animal like why would I want this, you know, in a coffee shop or why would I want this here? Well, it's really important for conservation. It's really important for the local economy. Uh, you know, these, these animals need to be represented, I think, in a really, uh, 
in a, in a true light, in a representation. And people need to understand about them. They need to understand, like, you know, my kids need to understand why it's important. And for people to be able to go in and look at a full mount in places like, you know, Bass Pro Cabela's, and now, you know, this will be displayed in one of our coffee shops in Black Rifle Coffee, I think it does give people an appreciation and a respect for the wildlife knowing that it's out there. I've never seen something like this. This is amazing. Yeah. Um, So now that we've talked about that, we get into like, we we put this, we took, you know, we put this bear in our sights, the first one. It was day two. Cole Cole was like, this is a runt. Like this is, this, (laughs) this is a horrible bear. You please do not. Yeah, like he's like, do not. I was supposed I to be do shooting not want first, this. and I had this thing that worked right in top of us. And I'm looking through my glass. I'm like, it's a fucking monster. And he's like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a sow. Well, he just like a, a seven and a half foot, eight foot sow, which great bear, but you know, we wanted boars like the yeah. older, more yeah. mature, the ones that are fucking things up. Yeah, yeah. And so that that was a good learning lesson for us, and and it kind of got those like not buck fever out of it but the first time you're looking at that thing you know 300 yards away in your glass there's a little moment of like whoa this is this is fucking intense well it was such a crossing a river yeah it's so cool it's like like crossing a river that like we could bear we wouldn't be able to cross the river where that bear crossed and it just like walked across like it was like crossing the street it was like nothing (laughs) but jared this thing like it came directly at us. Yeah. So we're we we're on our our glassing knoll where we were at probably eighty percent of the days where it's yeah. a little bit higher elevation, super good visibility, and we kind of split up into two different groups. And one would be covering like a one eighty, and then the other would be covering one eighty across sections of interlocking field. sectors of there you go viewing viewing yeah oh, and yeah. um so like you can tell when somebody comes up because it's like it's very chill relaxed vibes all day when you're glassing and then when somebody comes over and like hey, 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 yeah. starts whistling yeah. like you're like okay it's go time he's like pack up everything we're moving right now this thing's coming right at us that's a good point it's literally zero to a hundred you know you're just kind of chilling just like low key glass and then in, 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 in a moment it's like get your shit in your bag get your gun ready we're fucking we're hauling ass on this train yeah so so we don't take the shot on this one. No. Small. No, we passed. It was like day three. I yeah. think it was super yeah. early in the trip. And we were like, oh, great. But it was a good like um, uh, run through. Size, yeah. Good yeah. Run through. through. Yeah. All right. So how many more days go by until we see? Uh, day seven. Well, yeah, we saw other bears, but day seven, I think yeah. all of us were not chomping at the bit, but we had three tags. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have one tag for two weeks. Yep. So it kind of got to that point where like, in a perfect time world, we love to fill all three tags. Yeah, just, like, time to go. Yeah, just from a mathematical perspective, like three tags, yeah. 15 days, we need to average one and every five refunds. days. You don't yeah. get a bear. Yeah. Yeah. State gets your money. And yeah. so, you know, do day five and day six, we were like, <clears throat> you know, we started to get a little restless. Like, you know, there was a lot of shit talking that was happening to Cole. Yeah. Like, hey, dude, like, is like, this I actually what happened? He knew what he was doing, right? Yeah. So we're just, but we're, we're speaking to him in like an uneducated manner of just like, so we actually going to go like walk and move because <laughs> like we're all young athletic guys. Yeah. Like we don't have to sit here and he's just like, chill out. Chill. This is the patience. way it goes. Adam like have behavior. some patience. patience and we're just like, yeah. Okay. Bear guide. <laughs> let's, get to the, let's get to kind of the fun part. So about day six, Evan spots a bear. Well, we spot one bear um, across. It was like, the river and yeah. all the way in the back. And we're like, that's a nice bear. And then you spotted this like dark spot. And he was, it was, she was just chilling on this like random little like meadow, meadow <laughs> yeah. in like way back. Like on his like back, two How and a half, three miles, <clears throat> three miles away, miles, like one yeah, tiny speck, like miles. in the middle of openness. Because yeah. most of the time you're like having to look through a dense, thick alders. And they don't like come out. Like you don't get like long intensive oh, periods. Laying on his back. But he, he just came chilling, out bro. and he squatted and he stayed there for yeah. a while. And from three miles away, he looked big, big. which means this thing was a fucking yeah. monster. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, he's a monster because when they look when they look big from three miles, because we had seen another one, which might have been this this bear actually a few days before, like on day three or four, where it's like, wow, that is a big bear yeah. because it was even further away at that time. It was probably four miles away. And then, <laughs> it, but it looked big four miles away. And the difference is between the bears that we were viewing 
and they eat these bears in the glass is these bears look like polar bears. They look like brown or black polar bears. They're long, their legs are long. Long necks. They're long necks. Like they look like brown, black polar bears. And then the other ones look like grizzly bears. Like they're kind of, you know, round and big black bear, like, yeah. they look like a big black bear but i'm not discrediting the 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 size of these bears because they're fucking massive i'm just saying like there is a distinct difference when you see a big bear you're like that's a big bear because right. they're they're just their legs are long their necks are long they're, everything's long and big <clears throat> but it was like one of the only bears that i actually spotted by the way it was like one of the only fucking things that i saw and i was like wow that's that's a that's a big bear. So I'm like walking around, like tapping shoulders. Like, hey, cool. Is this a big bear? You know, and he's like, oh yeah, that's a big bear. Let's see. Uh, let's, let's keep an eye on this guy because if he's still there in the morning, we might be able to make a move. And it was a ways away. And we didn't want to burn this entire valley either. Right. So we woke up the next morning, got up, bear's still there. Yeah. Right. And, so. and we formulate a plan the night before yeah. too, because yeah. this one that was way out there that we knew was very big, there was also, there was, we saw three other ones that were about a click and a half away that were shooters. And we had seen two that were kind of like in this area moving in and out of our visibility. And then there was this other one that was like, close, like we got two good potential things that could happen here. And then we have that big one, which if the, cause they're all moving towards each other, yeah. right? Like it's breeding season. They're trying to get their... Three F's. Game on, man. Yep. And so... Your he, dick's wet. You can say that, Logan. Yeah. yeah. And he's... Cole's like... You can tell he, he gets into like guide mode so easy. And he yeah. like... he's He was on glass and I started just calling Cole. Like, Cole always on glass. Like, that dude is... If he's awake, like, his eyes are through binos. Yeah. And we kind of like put together. He's like, hey, we're going to come up here first thing tomorrow morning. If this bear is still here when we get up here, like, we're moving. And we show up and it was, so we're like immediately on day seven, we start our movement. Yeah. yeah. And that was probably like the kickoff to like the main, like exciting fact. Cause you see him, the once you see him, like on. we're moving, you're like, yeah, he's like a click and a half, two clicks away in your mind. Like, oh, we'll make it there in like 20 minutes. Like, and then when you start navigating the terrain, you're like, just kidding. We'll be there in three hours. Yeah. yeah just <laughs> because, kidding. And, and the wind was not in her favor on day seven. So we couldn't just like bird's eye towards him. We had to like swoop this huge, huge circle around him to get past the the windage yeah. on him or wind. So, yeah. So three, four hours later, you guys find a, what, 300, 300 yards away? No, well, it, it was, it was a long, it was a, it was a long movement and there's yeah. like more in there because we oh, were yeah. fucking moving. Like we, oh, yeah. we were moving. All of us were like, we were sweating our asses off and like I had, we stopped on another little, uh, uh, spur and we're still like we keep glass on them and then we'd you know kind of bounding over watch in a way and like I'd stripped my pants off and like sat on this you know uh, overlooking this little hill like pulled my pants off and I had my you know, my, uh, you know um, long underwear underneath and like stripped everything off and just like letting the steam come off my body and and, uh, and all of us are like okay we're putting some effort out you know like it was kind of a warm up yeah and but then once we get down into the valley, then you get into more of the thick alders and you're you're doing some creek crossing and you're getting into the, the variation of the permafrost of the tundra and uh you're moving. Like you're you're putting your fucking you're putting your 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 movement hat on yeah, and for the mill guys like, listening, it's the closest thing I've ever felt from like being on target again because you got your ruck and like you don't know if this bear is moving towards you. You know, we set up our second guide to do observe, but you can't have any form of communications because yeah. between yeah. each other. So the only thing we're working off is hand and arm signals, essentially. But once we started moving in there, you know, we're, we're like ruck running with our guns out, rucks on our back, just trying to like get to this bear as fast as possible. I'll let you pick up from there. Cause that, that's when it got real fun. Yeah. This yeah. was the first time that like we really got into the land. Yeah. And I, I, I think it was Trevor. It's like, it felt like you were on a whole different planet. Yeah. Like what you're moving through is unlike bush any type of terrain. Running through creeks. Yeah. And just like, and it's tough, man. Yeah, like moving tough. through those alders, like that shit is so shit. dense. Trying to like push through, like it's exhausting. Yeah. 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 
Well, Elder Bush, you're yeah. working through it and it's just like grabbing onto everything. And you're just kind of having to like, you know, navigate through it's grabbing your rifle and trying to pull it out of your pack. Huh. And, and you're going, and you're going uphill during all that. Like we, we get to the point where we're like, you know, I, it was like that, <clears throat> that moment in time when you're like, all right, we're going slim. Like, Get everything off that's going to slow you down whatsoever because it's game on. It's game on. We get down into the valley. We we uh, we get a couple hundred yards out from where we think the bear is going to be. And, you know, you're, you know, let's get rounds in. Let's get our rifles ready. Let's 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 make sure that we're, right. we're ready to go. Because at any point in time, depending on where they've moved, we could be. Did they move so shooting. quick? Like that, that last probably like. 400 yards. I mean, yeah. I was the first in the stack and Cole was in front of me and he's like, he's amped up and he's obviously like, get your gun ready because it only takes that bear five minutes to get that 400 yards yeah, right, right on top of us. And that's the difference between potentially getting mauled and eaten or staying alive is right. making a quick shot. Yeah. And then, so like when we worked up there, like we, we get up there and we're like, okay, we think this bear is real freaking close. You know, we're looking back at the guide and he's like, the other guy and he's trying to like communicate, but we're not figuring it out. And then boom, we see the bear. We're like, oh shit. And then all of us are like, wait a second. That's a really dark, dark colored bear. That's not the one we've been classing. Huge. It's like huge, huge, fucking massive bear. And so we're going, I don't think that that's the bear that we were just tracking. Right. And so we're looking back and we can't completely make it out because we're looking at the other guy through the binos and he's like, yeah. And we pretty much figure out like, oh my God, that bear Evan saw has already moved all the way down that valley and he's fucking 800 yards from us. Yeah. And other bear is somewhere within like somewhere. 200 yeah. to 300 yards of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't so basically, him, can't see him. We don't we have know. no fucking clue, but they're like, he's like, he's right there. And we're like, oh fuck, this mm. other bear is like on top of us mm. and yeah. we can't see shit. So in the time it took us to move like a click, a click and a half, this bear moved like three miles. Yeah. <laughs> Like and it's he, right in front of us. Like he's right, right there. Yeah. And uh, so once we set up and we realized like, okay, that's, that's, you know, my bear. I was like, yeah. okay, great. Let's get set up. Got set up. And we know. saw it about 500, 550 yards. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Started getting set up. And he's and, walking the wrong way. Ish. He's kind of moving away from us. And we're like, right. oh shit. And then of course, Cole being the wacko, awesome guy he is. Um, I only call Cole Wacko because he's a dear friend of mine now and I love the shit out of him. But he's like, all right, I'm gonna start calling this bear in. And yeah. I think all of us were like, fuck call, off. Call the <laughs> yeah. call the call the bear in. Like yeah. you don't call yeah. bears in. And he just yeah. starts making like all the bear noise. He's like, <laughs> rrr, rrr. and he's like, <laughs> yeah. like he's doing a dead moose. He's doing like a mating call. Yeah. And just with his mouth, dude, and like all of us are like, I'm like half like intense because I'm ready to like get it on. And then half like what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, like, so like, 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 yeah, like, yeah, yeah like, you just, what is he doing, dude? What is he doing? And yeah. no shit. The thing here, comes, here he comes. Here he comes. Just, and you guys can all um, give feedback. It's amped up talking about that first time we saw it at about what, 350, 400 when it presented itself. It's just like, <laughs> and like the size of the shoulders walking towards you, all of us were just like, the ground. Oh, yeah. yeah. My mm, lord, yeah. it's just ma pure majestic, and you're looking at this through your optic zoomed in, and so it's filling your your rifle scope, <laughs> yeah. and it's just like. And at one point, it stood up and like scraped its back yeah. on the tree. It was it was like it was a little cute until it mauls your face off. But yeah. it, it yeah. was it was a really intense experience to see the, a bear that big that close. Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, it was incredible. So you know, he moved in from like where we first got him like in our optics and then he got a little bit closer, a little bit closer. And it was like, I first picked him up, like, like shoot distance was like two thirty, and he started mm -hmm. moving into about, I think one eighty, Right. Yeah. Um, and then once Cole was like, shoot that bear. Okay. So shoot the bear. And he's like, shoot that bear, shoot well, that bear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, so okay. <laughs> to give context. So what happened was, you know, we're all sitting there with the rifles up to, if we had to support Evan, yeah. but Evan's taking the shot. And, and I want like, him to, I want him to, by the way, because it's your choice as the hunter. Like, I want these guys to back me up. Yeah. Like, yeah, hey, yeah man, yeah. like, I know you guys are capable. You all have tags. And we also want to make sure this thing 
goes down. Yes. Like, and we and want quick, to like sure. the worst thing you can yeah. do is have a bad shot or yeah. something happens with your round or I don't Here know. Here he comes. And, well, and he's nicked, and then you shot him in the yeah. ass, and he runs off. No one wants that. Nobody wants that. But so Cole is kind of telling Evan, just like, stand by, dude. Like, we're good. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's let him come in a little farther. And then Cole's kind of tonality immediately changed. She's like, shoot that bear, shoot that bear, shoot that bear. And what we didn't realize is the other bear got probably the scent of that bear coming in on it and smelled yeah. a big old mature one. And you see, like, Cole, he, like, perks up, and he goes, oh, shit, that the other bear is like right on top of us. So he's like, go Evan, go Evan, go. And then yep. you rip your shot and wing it, completely miss it. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How is it, you know, 3-3 three, Alapua, three, like, you know. Uh, uh, it was a 180 yard shot. 180 yard yep. shot, uh, you know. Right at the heart? Uh, a little left, a little left of the heart. Long? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, and, uh, you know, then, you know, we, 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 we dispatched that bear. And, you know, my shot hits first. Uh, I think Logan, you were second. And then Matt, you were, you were third yep. on him. And, but then immediately next, it's Matt's bear. So immediately next, it's like, <laughs> like he, goes, within, he goes like, within like six seconds. Six yeah. seconds. He's like, so Almost he's directing Matt. Like, okay, Shoot Matt. That bear. Get, like, well, no, we didn't have time. Fire. We just heard him running. Yeah. There's a bear and it's like running down. It's 75. If, if I not, if I would have not, luckily been in the right stack because that was my bear like evan could not have shot that no. bear because he just shot his bear like yeah. Yeah. it's just not how the rules work yeah and so the second i'm like oh shit and i stand up and all i see is the bear 71 yards just trucking and i probably had about two seconds to pull a shot and i'm like i just transitioned i'm like all right and i kind of followed up with my rifle scope saw the face and then pulled it right into the heart and just hit it and then just Boom, you see it. There you go, two just bears down and yeah. somersaults. Summer, I somersaulted that thing. And that was, I was joking last one about Humble Map. But yeah, it, it, was a, it was a dope shot. And, How the um, fuck did you get these things out? Dude, well, yeah, we'll get to that. You got two gigantic bears. But, you so, know, well, yeah. just the timing perfection of this in general. Like if Cole hadn't given Evan the instruction on that first bear, the he second have bear fast. would have been about 15 yards in front of us in about into 30 us. seconds. Yeah. Ooh. And we would have had to deal with that. But he timed it perfectly so that those shots coordinated to where we were able to get both of those in 30 seconds. I don't know. We, we it, time bears, just like slows down. Like everything just changes. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And and we're I think because Evan and I stayed up and we were a little nervous at first because we're like, we didn't see the bear. And I'm like, like everybody's like, did you hit it? Did you hit it? I'm like, I, I somersaulted that thing. I saw it hit. I felt really confident with my shot. I'm zero to 80 point of, I mean, point of impact, essentially. I saw it rotate. So we're like waiting for it. And I think there was that pause there where both Evan and I were like, Fuck, man, I was like, dude, I swear I hit that thing so good. And, but we were like, did I though? You, yeah. know, you think yeah, yeah, in yeah. the moment, I, I kind of like black out in those moments and like yeah. my muscle memory of just my former job takeover. And then Logan and the guy worked down there and essentially were like, dead bear. Yeah. So like that was like the sense of relief for us. Like, oh my God, we had a great shot. It bears down 30 yards from where I put a round into it. Yeah. Like clean kill, expired quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I went, I went down with Cole after that, that second shot and <clears throat> he, we, it was just big open grass clearing and Cole didn't get a good sight. He didn't see that second bear really well because there was just so many trees obscuring our view. And so he was like, he was kind of in search mode. He was like, he's so professional and he really just wants to make sure that these things are on the ground. I'm like, I, I went down there with supreme confidence. Like I saw a match shot. I'm like, there is no way. Like this thing is 100% down. And we go into this little grassy clearing and I knew there was a tree right by where I, th I thought Matt's bear went down. And just for context, I stayed up because I thought when they moved down, they were going to flush it up. Yeah. And I was going to take another shot yeah. if I had to. Yeah. So that's why I stood up. Yeah. yeah. I stood up there. And I get down to this grassy knoll and Cole like starts moving towards this thick patch of alders. And I, I'm like, I don't think he went over there. And I just look over to my right and there's this little small creek bed. And like, there is just a huge patch of blood. Like there, I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, there's no way. This thing is not very far away at all. And we looked down the creek and like. How yeah. close do you guys get to it? Because yeah, you guys are close. Yeah. I mean, from the, from the, Place where we found that first patch of blood, it was 30 yards away, maybe. Yeah. So he they ended up 
in making sure it was dead because they by the time they recognize it, they're 30 yards away to a potential live bear that's wounded that no yeah. one wants to be in that position and just yeah, yeah, yeah. wish that it's <laughs> uh, fully expired. So when Logan got his machete out and was like, we gotta get this. <laughs> he pulled like, out his RPG yeah. and he was like, yeah. not today, bear. Yeah. <laughs> That custom Grizzly Forge. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Lucas for making those uh, alder hackers for us. Those things are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> they really are. But to like capstone that whole experience with those two bears, it's just like, you know, there was seven days of just waiting and preparation. And then about, how long do you guys think it took us to get to that shot? Three hours? Two hours? Three hours, Three hours. I think, yeah. And so... And just two, you're, you're like your emotion, you dude, your emotions are so up yeah. and down because you're like, we lost the bear. And then we're like, okay, we think we see the bear. Okay, I think we shot the bear. And it's just, it's just like this emotional roller coaster. And then once we saw that second bear down, the other bear pretty much with his shot died in place. And we were, we were like, what did we, the, what the fuck yeah, did we what just, just happen? Happen? do? Like, we just got two bears? No, like Which, after like, it all comes. It hasn't happened unless ever. they've been fighting ever. Yeah. Ever. I was like, Cole, did we just double? Like, have you done this ever? He's like, no, that's my, that's my first that's brown my bear first ball, time. man. Double. Like, holy Dude, like, shit. Yeah. It's an eagle. Dude. So we get down there, you know, we, we, you know, skin the bears, you know, there's well over a hundred pounds a piece, you know, of just this right here, like the skin, the fur, the hide, however you want to frame that. And we we're we're like figuring out, okay, how long is it going to take us to pack these things out? Like thinking about how our rotation is going to go because one guy will end up carrying it for you know, because we, yeah, we just, got, we got to, to build on that K's. point you just said. So when you, when you take the skin and hide off, you're getting a certain layer of fat yeah. on there. And so they're weighing anywhere from about 120, 150 pounds. Yeah. Just the hide, right? Just the hide. Yeah. And, and that, it's awkward. It's, well, it's awkward. And even skinning yeah. those things, man, you, you don't realize like, it. dude, I'm a pretty strong guy. Like I'm having to like use yeah. all my strength to lift up an arm. Mm -hmm. Like they're, they're terrifying animals once you get close they're and terrifying. see how big their claws and yeah. teeth are. It's, it's, they're terrifying. They're dinosaurs, man. Like, they're they're, dinosaurs. there's no other way to put it. Like, uh, they, they are something that has existed for probably hundreds of thousands of years. And, like, to get up close to it, like, it incredible. is <laughs> so incredible. It's such a majestic being, man. Like, what an incredible, incredible opportunity. Yeah, we did. We yeah. took back straps. Um, you just to cook that. Well, yeah. you I, can't cook. You can. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You can cook it. You just have to cook it at a temperature that, that uh, kills the trichinosis. Well, what yeah. about fire? Uh, 160 or above. Like, we, we didn't cook it there. We took oh, the back straps yeah. and then we loaded them up in the, in the cub. So we brought the cub in. We only had to carry it, what, a K before yeah. we got, we got a good landing strip in for the cub. When I say good, yeah. this shit was like, not good. There's no way Four I would have. For a cub. There, you, well, you could have been like. Essentially what happened is the cub came in because. Like Cole sat phones back was like we have two bears now he's like no you don't you know and yeah so he he just flew by just like Check see it, it so out. he flew the thirty minutes and then was like yeah I could if you guys can get like a K out I could probably put this the cub down and then all of us were like we're more than willing to pack this out the the miles yeah. back to camp but I mean if you yeah. we don't have down, to dude, work gonna, smarter not if harder you're gonna be there <laughs> yeah work, work harder not smarter Jared smarter. like you would not believe this like flatland a tundra that's like I mean you've got just these huge mounds everywhere yeah, like, and I, like, I'm looking at like it, it looks, looks like, like it's yeah, flat like but no yeah it's exactly it's, it's moguls. moguls and you're like there's no way like, and no he way. like he kept doing his little flybys to see if like what it would be like to land I was like there's no way well he there's landed. just no way he can what I found out is like because I talked to him later he actually landed so he hadn't done tests like like test runs. He landed there twice. Oh, he did. Yeah, he landed there twice before because uh, I was talking to him on the way out, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, I mean, how did you know?" He's like, oh, "I landed there twice. Uh, you guys didn't see me." He's like, "I just kind of well, drifted in." I knew because yeah. I heard the off. plane coming down. I'm like, "He yeah. landed," and then I yeah, no, okay, he landed so he land. twice. Okay. So he's like, "I'm good to go." He knew that he could land there, <laughs> but we didn't know that he had actually landed the twice. plane. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, he's got 35 inch Tundra tires on this. These are Alaskan Tundra tires. These are 35s. Like these are this fucking huge balloons. Yeah. yeah. And just seeing this little plane come in on that shit. It's is like nearly stall so, out. Just, yeah. Just boom, so cool. You're bouncing you're off. Bouncing you're literally off using your power to stall the plane in a, almost a fucking VTOL. And you're, uh, uh. Yeah. It's, it was crazy. And we got to turn this thing around. Too. Yeah. We yeah. got to turn this so, thing around. 
Like there's no reverse in planes, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And, and once it, it's it's so much harder after it it slows down because it's got to like slowly go through those moguls. And so Cole gets out there to like try and spin the tail of the plane around, and like he gets caught up on a mogul, and the thing like runs him over in the back. Like, oh dear, yeah. it was it was an interesting ordeal. Yeah, because yeah, you're thinking there, like if if someone gets injured, we're like we're kind of screwed, or the plane gets messed up, like we're yeah. screwed. Like the the one dude we can call for help is with you know, us hospital. right now. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you break the plane, oof. <laughs> yeah, he's okay. So yeah. you load two of these in there. We load the two in there. And how far is the hike back? 3k oh wow like we got we got another 3k because we we had we decided to not go up and over the the spurs and hilltops that we'd come in on we we're like well we'll just follow the the river, river. back and I, i'm super glad that we did because it was it was like really Normal fun space. to cross do the river crossings and it was just and cool just to see the different bear, terrain bears yeah so now but we're you know we got headlamps on we're trudging through like trekking poles yeah. crossing rivers you know and it it was a true Alaskan experience at that point. I was like, okay, this is this is what I came here for. Like this entire thing, not that like, glassing from a hilltop for you know sixteen hours a day isn't like excruciatingly exciting, um, <laughs> but it's like that's what I came here. Like I want to I wanted to like feel the 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 water and see the fucking terrain and like you know bushwhack and like man, this is this is it. This is like why I came here right now. In certain uh, places, the like the elder bush is so heavy, you can't, even get, yeah. you can't even get through it. But then we'd find like a little bear trail that ripped through, and then we'd just walk the bear trails mm-hmm. to like try to circumvent like the hard, hard terrain. Yeah, it's a little sweeter that day because it was all worth it. It's all worth it. All, all of us were pretty quiet on the walk back, and then everybody was just like, "What the fuck just?" Well, happened? we were all in awe. We were like, "How in the world did if that just, just happen?" Do a double bear, like. Yeah. Never in our wildest dreams would we have ever painted that as the situation that would have you unfolded. Can't plan that. Yeah, no. no money in the world, no planning would ever no. recreate that. Yeah. It was a once in a while. If you would have been like, hey, write the wildest situation that you could possibly imagine. Wouldn't like, it it wouldn't have been in that. Yeah. No. Yeah. And so you'd be, we probably got in, what, 1230 that night? Yeah, pretty late. Because yeah, right. so yeah. you're getting like thirsty on the way back. Dark. You drink your water and you're just yeah. kneeling down in the, the creeks and filling up your water and drinking this like ice mm. cold, fresh Alaskan water, man. It's just <laughs> so it's, good. It's wild in all, all versions of that so water. How many days until you get one? Well, the next day, this another just monstrous bear comes right through. And so the the area that we're glassing on we took a down day the next day. We took a down uh, that, day yep. and like, cause we were smoked yeah. and like we were smoked. Like that was a long, like we put in 12 Ks that day, like total. Cause I was looking at my watch and it was like 12 K. Yep. Like it was a 12 K day and across like varying terrain. Like we were smoked. So the next day we were like, let's just lounge around camp. We'll get a late start. And then that late start turned into, let's just not start. And, Drink hot yeah. cocoa in the tent yeah. and yeah. chill out. Yeah. And, and we, like most of our stuff was wet. And it was it was kind of a nice windy this day fucking out, dude. I don't know what he did on Skin and the Bear, but he just smelled like a rotten was fish so factory, bad. and it so was he's so hanging up his bad. clothes like right above my cot. It's yeah. just like, uh, permeating, freaking. So I like, added to the experience for a majority of why we were skinning this thing. I had my my Chota waiter boots all the way up because they're like just just keep yeah. it so you don't get blood and and everything all over you and stuff. I'm like okay, and then. I like, we got so hot while we were working through this. <clears throat> you just started sweating. So I just started like trying to cool off a little bit. And then, so I rolled my Chota waders down and we were, there was like something else we had to do finishing up skin. And so like, I put my leg like on the bear's leg to like move it over to finish the skinning job. And I shouldn't have done that because this thing had so much fish in its belly when it went down for hibernate, like the whole thing, like all of the fat just stunk like fish. Oh, so I'm just like God. so oily, like up on my thighs. And I'm like, I went and I, there was like nothing we could do. Like I had to hang them up in the tent and like, they just stunk. Like I couldn't, Ugh. I couldn't get that smell out of those fish pants. Fat. We should never told you that, but a couple of nights I woke up with the wind and you'd hang your stuff and it looked like a person silhouette. And I woke up one night at like four in the morning and I was like, Oh, dude, I thought someone was standing over my bed. I'm like, what are you? Are you sleepwalking along? And I was like, oh, that's just your clothes. Yeah. <laughs> just your stinky ass fish clothes. Just fish clothes. Just I thought it was a fish <laughs> monster coming to get me. But yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the, 
it was it was the day after we took a down day. Um, we're we're back on our our glassing knoll and why Cole really liked this area is because it's, it's a travel corridor. Like they'll, they'll move through this thing and it was it extended into the mountains, like way where it was a little bit colder for a long ways. And he, Cole had hunted this area a couple of times before. And he just like, he had this like instinctual gut feeling about like really big bears moving through there. And it was, it was super late at night on day eight. And Cole just looks over to his left. He's like, that's a really big bear. That's a really, really big bear. And so we're like, uh, okay. So like, again, zero to 100 this time. Like, I think we were like, we had just put water into all of our meals. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, okay, we got to wash this thing. And like the wind wasn't great for us and it started raining. He's like, okay, we're going to, it was pushing down the center of this travel corridor. And like, all right, we're just going to like jump over this mound get into position, see what happens, right? So we get in on the other side of this knoll and Cole's watching this thing and he, he like looks over at me and he's like, hey man, this is a really big bear. Like this is a huge bear. I'm like, okay, cool. Like thanks for, <laughs> for that little, little spur of uh, heartbeat yeah. juice there. And it starts raining a little bit more and he's like, okay, okay, I'm going to call. He starts sort of, and this big boy, he just sits down. He literally sits down like a dog. Yeah. And he sits down, what was it, like 600? Yeah, 600 yeah, yards or something like yeah. that. And he's just, he's calling and he's calling and he's calling. And the bear just sits there. We probably watched him there for a half hour. I'm like, mm-hmm. and then finally, remember, he, so he gets up and then starts working towards us. And we're like, and then I kind of had the conversation with Logan and Cole was like, Hey, sub 400, are you comfortable? And he's like, dude, I've, I'm, yeah. I'm a tack yeah. driver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got this. super comfy, super comfy. And it just, it starts walking towards us, sits down. And it was like, nah, turns around and beelines it away from us. Directly. So that, you know, that's kind of what you come to learn throughout the process of the hunt is those. You never know. Yeah. And, and uh, that first two that we ended up getting, it was probably because there were two bears in the area that that's why calling that way works so well is because they knew there was something there and they were like, it, it was, was it's it was very working. evident. The smell you know? and everything was yeah. working. To but them. this, this one, there was no smell over there. It was a little like iffy and you could tell it was a super old bear. It's just like, wasn't quite sure about what was going on over there. And it was late at night. He was just like, oh, and he just meandered off and we never saw him again. Mm-mm. And so, we spent a couple more days up there and, um, you know, I didn't know this, but it, so I got, I got Lyme disease in, uh, Missouri. So like 10 days up there, like I was, I was feeling a little bit wonky and come to find out there's a reason why. Lyme disease. Yeah. Um, from a tick. And, uh, from a tick. Yeah. yeah. I was turkey hunting in Missouri and, uh, I'm like, Hey man, like, I got to, I got to get back to work. <laughs> so I went to Logan and uh, Matt and I were like, Hey, we, we're going to go back to work. Uh, we're going to high five you on the way out here. And uh, I'm glad I did because I had to start antibiotics because I wasn't on them Yeah, and I couldn't wait. Actually, like, it's not like I couldn't wait an extra week, but it, it, I'm glad that I actually got home because as soon as I got home, there's like, four messages from my doc, like, Hey, you're positive for fucking this thing. And I was like, okay, well, I guess, uh, the, this, you know, the earlier I start those, the better after, you know, Lyme. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I, I, it's not like I felt bad. It's not, I wouldn't actually know if I was like feeling bad, but it was like one of those things where it's like something's off. Like my back was kind of fucking tweaked and I was like, man, something's off and I got to go back to work. And Matt was like, yeah, I'll, I'll head out with you. So we, we, uh, regardless of the guilt trip that I tried to put them through yeah, for, <laughs> he did, you know, I, you know, but I have a, pr- I have a pretty good excuse now where I'm like, Hey, you, you know what? I felt a, good, a little bit off. Good enough like, no, I didn't. And, uh, and you so you were up there for days. another four days <laughs> past when we were up there and you, yeah, the, you hunted down to the wire. Dude, it, it was another six. And like, I, I think it was, you know, looking back hindsight, 2020 and everything, but like it, it was, it was super cool to get that like 
kind of the the slim down version of the team that run because we started moving a lot more. Right. Because like when we get down to the wire on this stuff, like we don't have a lot of options, yeah. and it's like we we were still seeing yeah we were still right. seeing huge bears, but we were seeing them miles and miles away. So we just kind of extended the amount of travel that we were moving on a daily basis. And we and moved this up. is you, Trevor. So Trevor Thompson, Cole, and, and Will. 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 Will, yeah. The other assistant guide. And so we started pushing it. We did about, every day we started about doing three times the movement that we would do going to that one glassing knoll. And we were kind of pushing towards the area in which we got the first two bears um, just because that it, it seemed to be like be that kind of like magnetic situation right. for, for the bears. Like there was just a lot of really good activity. They were kind of moving through there and there was, it was kind of a, a tripod of different travel corridors that were coming into this. So we got, it was just kind of the perfect area to be in. And there were a couple of days like, you know, again, 50 mile an hour winds, you're sitting up all there, up there all day. You're not really seeing a whole lot. And then I think it was the second to last day and we see like kind of similar situation to the first one. We see a, a really big bear a couple miles away and then we like haul ass the opposite direction to like hope, just hope that this thing is going to come close and have another situation like we had earlier in the, in the hunt. Nothing doing, nothing doing. And like, you know, I'm starting to get just a little antsy, you know, like it was, it's so interesting when it, you are kind of going through that and you're like, man, it was just like, it was such an awesome experience going through those first two with you guys. Like it, you just, you want to have that, that hunter's experience again. Like, right. and, and when we were moving that movement we did with you guys on this, like it was so instinctual. Like I felt like I was returning to my roots right. as a hunter. Like it was such a primal thing where you're trudging through with these weapons and like towards before we got to that knoll where we shot the first two, like, we were almost sprinting. Yeah. Like it was like we were old tribal hunters, like moving through to like do this colossal task. It's like, it's, it, it With was high tech equipment, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> the feeling was there. Yeah. But it was pure living. Like I haven't felt that alive. Right. In a, in a really long time. And so we're watching. It's the second to last day. I'm like, Cole, what do you think, man? Like, you don't want to pressure him. You know, like, hey, what do you think? I'm like, where, where are you honestly at? And right towards the end of the second to last day, we see two like way up, way up on the snow line. And they're mating up there and they got a little den. He's like, one of those is really nice, really nice. It's going to be a movement. It's going to be a hellacious movement. And you're going to shoot across ridge lines. I'm like, that sounds awesome. <laughs> like, let's do that. Like, let's yeah, make that this app. Cool. That sounds yeah, yeah. Cross awesome. Cross ridge line weather mating, I'm in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so similar to the, to the, to the first two, like formulate a plan. We're like, all right, we'll get up to our glass signal. If they're still there, we'll move on them. We get up to the glass signal. As soon as we get up there, they start moving and they check out of the area. So from about 10 a.m., which was really when the, the movement started to pick day. up. Yeah. Damn. To about. And you can't extend it. It was the last day of the hunting, hunting season. season. Yeah. Because the hunting season is very quick out there. Yeah. Three weeks. Three weeks. For about three hours we don't see anything and uh i'm just i'm just kind of like being quiet and i'm like cole when are you gonna start getting nervous he's like um i think about 11 30 the season closes at midnight 11 30 i'll start getting nervous I'm like, oh okay like dude had so much supreme confidence in everything that he was doing it was just it was it was it was like any other day for him and of course about a half hour after he says that, like this beautiful bear kind of starts just moving and coming out of the alders, like not too far, about 400 yards away, 500 yards away from where we initially saw Evan's bear. He's like, okay, let's do this. And so <clears throat> kind of the same crosswinds moving in and we do this kind of like little J hook movement where we get up onto this ridge find a little bit of an opening area. But as opposed to where we were on an elevated position, like I was looking up at the, where we thought this thing was going to come out. And it's thick. Like this thing may pop out like 10 yards or 100 yards, I don't know. And then we get set up and <clears throat> Cole was a big proponent 
the the same way with the first two of like we just stacked up our packs right and kind of like got into a good solid kneeling position so he's like get set up get ready to go and maybe 30 seconds after that like he, he sees it start to move through through the all he's like i think i see it about 150 just get ready just get ready it's going to pop out here in a little bit and that waiting period it was probably about 10 minutes but it felt like about yeah. two years, you know? <laughs> yeah. It gives your mind enough time to where you're like, this thing may have doubled back and it may pop out to my left at about 10 yards. Right. It To where we kind of thought it was going to come out, like all of those question marks start entering into your brain and you're really not sure how this whole thing is going to unfold right. with how dense all of this stuff is. And then... After about that 10 minute mark, he's like, all right, I got him. I got him. I got him. All right, get ready, get ready. And literally he, <clears throat> he starts calling. He's like, bah, bah. And like right on that second call, it just hit perfectly. That illuminated reticle was awesome. <laughs> Took one shot, jutted it into the alders <clears throat> and we went in after it. Now to where the first bear, Evans bear was like, why? Out in the open. Out right? in the open. Now we're punching into, like, you got maybe 10 feet of visibility into this alders. Cole didn't see the shot real well, so he's going into super strict hybrid guide mode. He's like, do not move. Like, he is a completely different person when he's pursuing these bears in, in the dense world. As you should be, yeah. because it's... It's how you stay alive. It's, it's no and, joke, yeah. Yeah, it's how you... Yeah. And, and this is, like, that is the most dangerous point that you can get to is these like potentially wounded bears and these super dense ears like that's how people die that's that's how like serious wounds can happen and we go to the area where i shot don't see any blood there's no blood and so we kind of but <clears throat> he's just trying to stay in tune with all of his senses so he kind of just makes me just simmer he's like just Simmer. I'm like, cool, I'm fine, man. <laughs> just, just like, relax, relax. Oh, good. He's like, I just want to be able to hear anything in case we need to move it. So we kind of start doing our little expanding circle, kind of working out, working out. And then he's like, oh, hey. Yeah, it's right here. It was like 30 yards away. The shit was just so, and it, and it was dead. It was just, it was so dense and thick through there that there was a, <laughs> a period about 20 minutes where like, Dude, I don't know, man. Like, this thing may pop out at any freaking moment. Yeah, just be pissed. ready, dude. Yeah. And just a gorgeous, beautiful bear. Like, it, its whole thing is, like, its whole coat is just this awesome, awesome coat, man. And it was to, to do that, to go through that experience and, like, feel like we completed the mission. You know, we, we right. went out, like, that was a colossal task. Three tags. Three, three tags. Three, three bears years, three in, in 15 days, man. Like that, that is such a seemingly difficult thing That's to do. Cool. Yeah, man. He's, he's, he's the real deal, man. Real like deal. he, he can, he can do it right. And just professional all the way through. He earned the ax you gave him beforehand. Yeah. He earned it a couple of years ago when he was helping us with the adaptive athlete shoot, but he earned it yeah. again, right? Like <laughs> a couple of times over and I, Hats off to everybody for this because honestly, like, like, you know, our ability to go out and do like epic shit is quite literally because our customers want us to go out and do epic shit. And, you know, I can't thank them enough for all the support they've given us throughout the years because without them, we, we wouldn't be able to go out and bring this stuff back to you guys. You know, this bear will be in one of the coffee shops that we build in Idaho in my hometown. It'll be a mount uh, given back to the customer community so they can come in and take a look at it. Um, you know, Matt's going to put his in the studio at his house. Logan's going to put his, where are you going to put yours? At my house. At your house. Yeah. So, you know, these are just as much your bears as they are ours. So we can't oh. thank you guys enough for everything you've done. Yeah. Great story. <laughs> no, yeah. dude, it was awesome. I think we talked a little before. It was, it was a great experience and it was cool just like getting away. And we haven't had an opportunity to do yeah. that in lots and lots of years. So it was, it was fucking rad. It's fucking awesome. Next adventure, 30 days in Hawaii fishing. 
I hope so. Yeah. And hunting. Yeah. <laughs> fishing and hunting. That, that and be coffee. great. Fishing, coffee. fishing, roasting. Yeah. Fishing, roasting, fishing, roasting, and hunting. Yeah, exactly. And I think the capstone of that story is um, the banter between Cole and Evan consistently because Cole just makes cowboy coffee and then Evan is just like, scoffing at it and he's pulling out all his you know probably packed more coffee equipment than than hunting gear in his bag but it was i didn't was need great. a coat i got coffee i got evan hay for coffee every morning that's you know it's perfect it's up there it's pretty good coffee i, I do it's i do right. good yeah all right <laughs> excellent boys cool thanks guys hope you enjoyed